Hey guys, what's up? Just want to share with you a uh, quick and almost perfect game in the, the G3 Vienna. I'm slightly kind of messing around with this, you know, in my, in my own mind thinking, you know, would I be better going back to like the Göring Gambit or the Danish and stuff like that, where I've actually historically got uh, a better win rate because I'm, I'm not much better than 50-50 right now as white with this opening, but at the same time, I think it's worth ploughing on with because I'm starting to understand the opening a bit more. Okay, so uh, this is just a five minute blitz game. My opponent's also rated in the 1300s. Okay, so we have the Vienna opening. This is normal. So my normal setup that I'm expecting now could be both knights and bishop out to c5. Okay, so we push g3. Out comes the bishop to c5. Very, very normal. You know, it's, it's in the Italian position. It could put pressure if I try and castle short. Okay, so we fianchetto the bishop. That's practically always the right thing to do. Out comes the knight. Now, usually when this knight comes out, um, I'm, I'm learning, because I did some analysis actually in the middle of the night last night, that h3, even before d6, even before we can have knight or bishop coming to here, h3 is a good move. So I push h3 now, and my mnemonic, my memory memory trick is is, Harry before horse. Okay, so Harry comes before I'm going to play knight ge2. Castles. d3 now. And in comes the knight. So I play knight ge2 as normal. Obviously, if, if he takes here, then he's invested one, two, three jumps in the knight. Knight gets eliminated. Where's the development gone? Right? Um, I mean, he's not doing too bad. You know, he has castled. So we have queen e7, and now I break immediately with f4. Okay, um, computer says castles or knight a4, which is interesting. So knight a4 before d6 is played, trying to chase the bishop. But if the bishop comes here, I guess it's become worse. You know, you've kind of achieved the goal, but then I've got a knight over here as well, which is a bit odd. And the computer's third move is actually knight takes knight. I do none of those things. I, I break immediately, immediately with f5. Now we get d6. And now we've got options, right? I, I've got f4 in. Um, but I, I still don't want to castle. Sometimes you don't want to plow ahead with castling. Um, especially if this bishop's still here. And especially if there's a potential discovered check. Because, like, for example, knight takes knight, it's a double check, you lose a knight. Right? Knight takes knight, knight takes knight. Not good. So now knight a4, because the bishop has nowhere to go. He can't go to b4, because c3 is a, is a pawn fork on bishop and knight. So very common. Drops back to b6. I, I take him out. Pawn takes. Right? So black is now starting, you'll notice, black is building up a bit of a, a pawn cluster in, in the in the center just on the on the queen side there um, but now I decide to take out the knight because now we've got e d taken away from the center in a way and black now has two sets of double pawns and I've got a beautiful centerpiece okay now we castle and we have c5 and I decide to push on there's a few reasons one is, my opponent only has a light squared bishop, so having a big light squared pawn wall <coughs> is going to quarantine this bishop on the wrong side of the board for the duration. Bishop comes out to d7. I feel like I need to develop my dark squared bishop. I could have brought it to g5, but I, I thought, he's doing a job here. He's also defending g3, <coughs> excuse me, which is otherwise undefended. Bishop moves again. Don't know what he's doing there. Okay. And now g4. So now what I'm doing is, because this bishop's out of action, this rook's not involved yet, let's use these pawns as an attacking force. Okay, we have uh, rook a to e8. Again, just staring at the pawn wall. Right? It's like, what can you do? You're going to need a sledgehammer. g5. Now pushing the knight. I calculated knight can't come here. Can't come here. Because of the queen. Can't come here. So what's he going to do? Back goes the knight again. Okay. And now queen g4. Lining it up with the king. Right. Uh, preventing this. 
and we have G, G6 now from black. This is a concession. Uh, the computer says here H4 or Queen G3 or F6. I push F6. And now we get a very common idea, right? This pawn is prevented from moving forwards. If I can prevent this pawn from moving forwards, then I have the option of just dropping the queen in there with an unstoppable mate. Okay, so the queen's under attack, queen comes to here, queen h4. And now black really has to push h5. You get one shot at this. They don't, they play knight e5, this is now losing. Mating four, because queen h6. He, he tries coming in with a check, I just take him out and he has to resign. Okay, so pretty good there, pretty good. And um, 93.4 accuracy, 2050 in a five minute blitz game. I will take that. This is some signs of progress in the G3 Vienna. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna push forward. Okay, it, feel, it feels like a bit of a grown up opening. You know, this is something, let me pull up the, um, pull up the Masters database. This is something that is played at the top level. Okay, uh, Knight F6 most common move and G3 is the most common move played by title players, right? It even has a 33% win rate for white, which ain't too bad at, at the top level, and 23% for black, okay? Um, and here at the top level, we have D5. D5 is the move that I have found pretty challenging in the past, and they always, always take, okay? so. There you go. I wonder what happens at, uh, yeah. So E takes D5 66% of the time, right? And this is at 1600, let's do 1800 to 2500, okay? E takes D5 71% of the time, okay? So, lots to learn, lots of variations. I thought you'd enjoy that one, okay? See you soon.